Sayyidi, do we need to keep the head covered in the restroom even though we recite dua before entering and exiting? Do we need to keep what? Our head covered. The head covered. Yes, inshaAllah that, that's your most important place to get covered, that's his house. So always visualize the bathroom is the house of shaitan. So when Allah partitioned everyone's place and, and resting place and sleeping place, when Allah cursed him, He says the bathrooms would be your home. So as a result, that's where he resides. Where would you need your hat the most? In his home because he's going to give you a khutbah. As soon as you enter in, what's going to happen? And you enter with your left foot and you seek refuge in Allah from the accursed devil, enter with your left foot into the bathroom, he's going to begin to try to teach you and give you inspirations and talks, oh my servant, I'm a bat and then give you all sorts of wisdoms and talks where you come out of the bathroom like Einstein, like a scholar. So when they ask Einstein, where you got your inspirations? He said, most of the time from the toilet, right? So then we know who his teacher was. So of course that's the, his abode, that's where we're going to go with full armory, your taweez under your shirt, your hat on your head, step in with your left foot. But asking Allah that you're seeking refuge before entering in, enter in, dastur, that anything there not going to get wet and, and fight you and you do whatever you have to do and, and keep your, 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 your practices and understand that don't seek any inspiration or knowledge from that direction and that location. And anything he tries to expand to you of an understanding, pay no attention to it. And the only knowledge should be sought on the prayer carpet. That when we're praying and meditating, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum, Shaykh. Alaykum as salaam wa uh, Sayyidi, can women use siwak or miswak as well? In our culture, only men use it. No. The men have, a, I think, the wardrobe just allows it to be more accessible. But the siwak is uh, multiplying the salah and the action by 27 times. So it's a, it's a reward of reviving the sunnah and uh, you don't… for people they should put their hand like this, nifaqi fi qalbi wa shaykh khafi and then put their siwak away inshaAllah. But block anyone from seeing your mouth and the movement of your mouth inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, why do I have continuous ringing in the left ear all day long? Yeah, I don't know, you can seek medical attention if there's something medically wrong because the ringing can be a different sign of, of different medical conditions. The spiritual ringing comes and goes and maybe somebody who's more attuned to frequencies and vibration hears a, like a humming and a buzzing. But something that's consistent all day long could also be something in the eardrums or a medical condition. So they have to seek the, the medical attention for that first and rule out that condition, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Sayyidi, can our past sins prevent our heart from seeing? Please forgive me for asking. Sure, why would it not? That again everything has to be common sense. If there's a lot of sins then those sins are like uh, rubbish on the heart. So they have to be cleaned, right? All of the things that people see, what you capture through your eyes of images and, and videos and Snapchats and these and this and this and this and this is going where? It goes to the heart which is your hard drive. And until the hard drive is cleaned, how can anyone see? And that's the problem is that many people are doing good then looking at bad, doing good and then looking at bad, you're not able to clean fast enough to get your hard drive to be cleansed. So it means the istighfar is a tremendous cleansing. The salawats on Prophet tremendous cleansing. The zikr and the association and the meditations where you're connecting your heart 
tremendous cleansing then controlling the eyes. Keep the vision of your eye down, keep the eyes off of what's not appropriate where you know that that image you just saw when you close your eyes that's what you're seeing. Instead of seeing Medina you're seeing something else in the eye of your heart. So then you refrain from that and then you train on how to wash your eyes in your shower. That you go into the shower and ask the soul to wash away all of the filthiness and the dirtiness that been throwing upon and cast upon it by the physical being and our physical being. When we practice all of these then the abundance of positive should start to overtake the negative. And as a result the mirror is clean and then the firasab can begin to shoot out. And the, the greatest catalyst is then a strong connection with the shaykhs because they come with an immense power that begin to burn the mirror of the heart. Now they have lasers on these YouTubes where they show the laser cleans metal, it's a light and it's cleaning actually the rust off of metal. If you think the dunya does that then what do you think about the, the nazar of the hearts of awliya? That when you connect with them there are light from Allah's light we just described. Allah's dressing His attributes upon their reality. So then that light comes and Allah said, be careful of the vision of the believer for they look with the light of Allah So it means that in their nazar and meditation their spiritual firasan is on the soul of that person and that light comes and begins to burn all of these bad characteristics inshaAllah. So all these practices then open up the ability for firasan and for basira, for ahl basira to those who can see through their heart inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can we use the names of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt salam in our du'a and ask Allah to accept our du'a due to the Ahlul Bayt? Sure, you should make everybody in your du'a. The du'a of a generous person includes everyone. That we've been to places and they say, I asked them, why the shaykh's name is not in the du'a? Oh no, no, we stop at this shaykh. I say, why you cheap? What did you lose from that? If you thought that person was of someone you loved and of a benefit for you, why you didn't pray for them? Didn't cost you anything. Allah didn't say that if you mention them, I'm going to charge you hundred dollars. So it means that the generous soul is asking for everyone. The Ya Rabbi I'm asking in their name and in their blessings that whatever I did good grant it to their souls and that their nazar be upon me, their dress be upon me, the 12 Imams and we have a du'a on, on our Facebook that by mentioning their Imams names it even takes away insanity. There was so much barakah and blessings in mentioning the 12 Imams and their names that take away every type of difficulty, reciting Nadi Ali. And this is from the Pakistani shaykh, shaykh who was a Ahmad that they had a whole fatwa describing. He said, if you recite 6,000 times takes away this, 300 times takes away this. So it means these are all Ahlul Sunnah understandings that by reciting the names and the, the Nadi Ali, the, the du'as, Imam as Sajjad has a whole book on Sajjadiyya and all the du'as and Sayyidina Imam Musa Qasim was all throughout Naqshbandiyya that they were reciting Joshani Kabir from Imam Al-Qasim and the shaykhs, Naqshbandi grand shaykhs were travelling in those regions and reciting those du'as as a part of their daily wazifas. So definitely what the imams have, have been given as an inheritance from Sayyidina Muhammad they are definitely to be incorporated within the practices and their love and, and their dress. We don't mention it because you have to do the etiquette of Naqshbandiyya first. If you did all of those strong in that and you have extra time then definitely seek the du'as of the Imams and, and their love and, and call their names for their madad and their support, inshaAllah. That's what we've been trying to teach, that's why we celebrate their passings and their comings, their birthdays and their passings. So that people's attentions and love and nazar be upon them and then also to gain their nazar upon us that we're weak and in this world of, of difficulties. Nothing has been more, more beautific 
than using the name of Fatima Zahra in our life and how much it opened, the fountain of abundance flowing that just by the beautific name of Fatima Zahra every door that would be closed to us bearded turban people open with Allah's grace. They throw all their muffins and lettuce and vegetables and food. Why? Because we're clever or do we use the name in which Allah loves dearly and a love and a name in which Prophet loves dearly and that her grace and beauty dress us and bless us for ourselves, our families and our communities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh The people who guide others without a shaykh, is their knowledge from Allah or nafs? Yet if they don't have a shaykh then they have a, a jinn and a nafs. So it's, it's not the system, it's not the system. Wajib al taqlid is Ahlul Sunnah's fiqh. It's wajib, it's wajib to follow that your knowledge came from who? So you have to verify who's your knowledge from. So I, I, I read and I, I watched uh, some YouTube, that's, that's not the uh, acceptable chain of knowledge. For external scholar from Naqshbandiya they have to show their ijazahs of who studied, who they studied Qur'an with, who they studied hadith with, who they studied their fiqh with, who they studied everything with. Now for spiritual shaykhs they have their ijazah on who they spiritually accompanied and that their shaykh signs and said that they accompanied me and through all these years I'm signing off on how much I've tested this individual and my faiz is behind him. He didn't sign that. He's a Hafiz of Qur'an, spiritual shaykh received his ijazah that the spirituality of his shaykh and himself are fully supporting this individual that he has accompanied us and we are signing an ijazah sending support. And this support from Allah and through Sayyidina Muhammad and to these Muhammadan representatives. But definitely there has to be a, a chain and a source, so imagine the physical world that you go to a and you ask the teacher that, where did you study? He said, I didn't, I, I got it from YouTube. And then you're, you're going to you take a course with someone like that? So no, and spirituality is a thousand times more difficult because you're learning from all of our teaching that it requires zikr, then who gave you the awrath? And then what zikr are you doing? It requires all of this connection and spiritual connection and meditation and muraqabah. And we said that there is no knowledge without muraqabah and a spiritual conne connection because the knowledge has to come from malakut not mulk. You have to have a connection to the world of light. So how did the living person connect into the world of light without a shaykh? They entered a state of death by themselves and then connected into the world of light? No. So then they're just using a physical connection, a material connection and their guidance is only to the level of material understanding. And if they enter into the spiritual talks it's rubbish, it's not verified, it's not something they witness. Ilmu yaqeen has to be from these shiukh and ahlul dhikr. Ayn yaqeen means that they trained in vision in opening their ayn, their spiritual vision. Their ilm and ayn become what? Yaqeen. So how can you have ilmu yaqeen if you don't sit with the Ahlul Dhikr and the shiyukhs? So I got it from a book, an old book Shams al-Marifa, that's not going to work, it's impossible. And then who trained you in Ainul Yaqeen and what did you connect your heart with? So they weren't trained in Ainul Yaqeen, so then what they speak is not from this level of Haqq Yaqeen. So this is completely different, this is live and living. And that is a, a dress and a blessing that uh, dresses and grabs the servant at their soul. They speak to the level of the soul, it grabs their soul and brings it in, brings them in to that reality. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa 
on the topic of qurbani, is it possible to use something else as qurbani so that we don't have to hurt the animals? Shouldn't we have compassion on animals as humans? Have what? Compassion Com on animals? You know. Yes. This is this is this is not a vegan understanding. Compassion on animals is that each animal and everything has a zikr. So when you cut the tomato, it has a zikr and it's shouting and is very upset that you cut him. So everything has a zikr, even a flower that you take the flower to eat it, it had an existence. But the chain of authority, the chain of command, the, the reality of our existence is Allah is a belief in God, that God told these creatures and this creation that I love this Adam and Eve and if you want to serve me, serve them. And as a result of their khidmat and their service to Adam and Eve, their existence is raised. So when you come to cut a tree, it had an existence, it had a chanting. When you burn it, you can hear the sadness of that creature, that creation. But for the sake of Adam and Eve to find warmth or fragrance in beauty, it submits to the will of God and as a result it shows, I'm willing to serve God. So it is its service. So we shouldn't worry about you know, being cruel, you should worry about these creatures and creation all wants to serve. And the, the kindness in which you have a zabiya, that's completely something different. That we don't do it to harm the animal, we don't do it for them to see and witness that type of difficulty. But when an animal gives itself for the sake of its meat to be distributed, for Adam and Eve to eat and to be nourished. That is the mirage of that creature. So why would you deny its ability to be raised? Otherwise it came onto this earth, it came and went for no reason. So its highest, its highest reality was to serve Adam and Eve. If the tree was cut to be burned for warmth and not for play and not for destroying, then it was of service. So creatures and creation all teach us how to be of service and through that service God raises their existence and whatever that reality is. The human reality is something different. When they live a life of service, God elevates the power of their soul, the reality of their soul to a higher plane. We have even in Qur'an the dog from Ashab al-Kaf, now a dog that never going to enter into these realities. But Allah showed, no. It when, when that dog actually lived a life of being of service to the servants of, of Allah, means what we call, what do you call Abdullah, Ibadullah, no, Abid, the one who serves the one who serves Allah right? The dog became Abid, he became a servant of the servants of Allah so why Allah gives us that example in Qur'an that this dirty creature, we think it as something dirty because you, you lose your wudu around that animal, but it served the servants of Allah Allah allowed it into paradise. So then what about seeing eye dogs that are, that are serving so many of, uh, of this creation that can't see and they act as the eyes for this creation? So alhamdulillah, anytime these creatures are serving, this is their existence, this is the purpose of their existence, this was the purpose of their being raised, otherwise they came to just live and die for what? But when the humans come to eat from the fruit, then the fruit had a purpose and that's what God is teaching us, look live a life of service. So a wasted life is a human that came onto this earth, ate, drank, slept and died. Is like the fruit that came from a tree, fell on the ground, rotted and went back into the earth, served absolutely no purpose. But when he comes into the earth, he lives a life of service, goes out and helps people, 
he achieved what he was supposed to achieve of a higher plane and a higher understanding inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.